Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. In this module, we are going to discuss about the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. As many of you may be knowing, CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Sort Palindromic Repeats. In this lecture 1, we are going to discuss about the basic biology of CRISPR system in bacteria. Let us start with the work of Ishino et al, who in 1987 was working on an interesting enzyme called alkaline uh, phosphatase, which has many isozyme forms. They were looking into the mechanism of conversion of the various isozyme forms in E. coli. And uh, while doing so, they discovered a series of five repeated palindromic nucleotide sequences in the 3 prime and flanking region downstream of the IAP gene. The repeat sequences were separated by variable sequences of uniform length with no homology to each other. Although of no relevance to their work, they nevertheless dedicatedly reported about this unusual sequence structure with an unknown biological function in their concluding part of their manuscript. Uh, thereupon it was soon forgotten uh, by the scientific uh, community. In 1992, another researcher called Francisco Mojica working at the University of Alicante in Spain was reviewing the genome sequence data from an extremely halophilic microbe called Haloferex mediterranei and he noticed that uh, in this particular organism, there were 14 unusual uh, DNA sequences, each of which was 30 bases long. And each of these sequences read roughly the same backwards and forwards and they repeated every 35 bases or so. Mojiga developed a lot of interest in these uh, sequences, how we had to struggle to find funds to pursue research on this new discovery. And he was even ridiculed by peers and decision makers for his interest in these strange little repeats. There are many repeats in many organisms. We have known them for years and still do not know how many of them work. Many of his peers and criticizers would say and they would discourage him by telling do not care about repeats so much. At the time, no one including Mojica knew that these repeats were going to change the course of biotechnology revolution in the coming decades. The term clustered regularly interspaced palindromic repeats CRISPR was coined by Mojica in correspondence with a team of Dutch scientists led by uh, Ruth Jensen at the Utrecht University uh, in the year 2002. Jensen in the same year identified another set of sequence present with CRISPR which he named as CRISPR associated genes or CAS genes. By 2005, Alexander Boltin found that spacer sequence between the CRISPR sequences shared similarities with the DNA viruses. They also discovered 2 to 6 base pair long protospacer adjustment motif or PAM, a conserved sequence present at the end of sequence similar to spaces in the target. It was hypothesized that CRISPR has some role in immunity of host bacteria, although it was not understood exactly how. Let us now look into some of the important discoveries in the field of CRISPR. As we have already discussed about the work of Ishino et al, in 1987 they discovered some tandem repeats sequences downstream of the IAP gene in E. coli while looking for the mechanism of isozyme conversion of alkaline phosphatase. Then we know about the work of Mojica and it was in 2002 which we have already discussed that he along with Mojica along with Jensen uh, gave the name uh, CRISPR. In 2005 we know that the spacer sequences in bacteria and archaea were found to be highly homologous with their viruses which, they, which attacks them. By 2012, this basic knowledge was soon converted into a technology. It was possible to do in vitro genome editing with CRISPR-Cas9 and this was developed in 2012. The very next year, this technology was used uh, for modifying eukaryotic cells 
by using this CRISPR Cas9 technology. And in 2014, there was discovery of the precise method to modify genes in eukaryotes with this CRISPR Cas9. In 2016, oncogene mutations were inactivated by using CRISPR Cas9 technology, and 2017, CRISPR Cas9 was used to modify the beta globin gene in human embryos. In between these discoveries, there are many, many important uh, discoveries which we are not discussing in detail. Uh, kindly refer to available literature uh, if you are interested. 2019 is considered a black year in a way. Uh, he Jing Yangkui in China was jailed for deliberately violating medical regulations and for rashly applying gene editing technology to human assisted reproductive uh, medicine. In 2020, amidst the corona pandemic, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Edodna was awarded Nobel Prize for the development of a method for genome editing, which was basically the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. So from 1987 up to 2020, you can see the trajectory through which this technology and discovery uh, moved through right up to the year of 2020 when it was uh, honored with the highest uh, award. The developments has not stopped, many new developments are uh, coming in of late. We will discuss some of those in this particular course uh, and these two uh, few lectures. Let us go back to the year 2007, uh, where uh, when Barango et al. found out that these uh, sequences, which were once ignored for their unknown biological functions and was being ridiculed by peers as mere repeats and now named as CRISPR, together with associated Cas genes, form an adaptive immunity which provides resistance against bacteriophage uh, infection. Basically, the immune system uh, provides these kind of defense in higher organisms which are multicellular, but finding such a uh, corresponding system in a very small single cellular bacteria was uh, quite astonishing. This was published in Science. As you can see this paper, CRISPR provides acquired resistance against viruses in prokaryotes and is considered a landmark paper. Let us now go to a concept called Markov chains. Many of you may be already knowing. This was introduced by Andrew Markov in 1906 and is used to model a discrete time, discrete space stochastic process of various domains uh, like finance, engineering, physics and even uh, genetics. The Markov chain can be described as a uh, triple of S, X and P. Uh, a set of states is denoted by S with x random variables and a transition probability matrix of p. In simple terms, a Markov chain is a sequence of random variables within a finite state space with values in s for which the transitional probability p of the state at the time t is given by the transitional form the state and the time t minus 1 with probability p which is called as the Markov assumption. This Time t minus 1 is important uh, for the next event. We will discuss about that how. The random variables transition from one state to the other uh, based on an important mathematical uh, property called Markov property. Discrete time Markov property states that the calculated probability of a random process transitioning to the next possible state is only dependent on the current state and the time and it is independent of the series of states that preceded it. Uh, to make it simple, uh, uh, right from your kindergarten days uh, to middle school uh, to high school, uh, you have various levels of uh, performances or you acquired uh, knowledge step by step, right from learning the alphabets. So, finally, when you graduate out into college, uh, what important, what is important is your final score in the 10th or 10 plus 2. Your score at 10th leads to, leads you to the 10 plus 2 uh, where you decide whether to go to the art streams or the uh, commerce streams or the science streams. And supposingly you have taken up the science stream, again your 
uh, performance at the 10 plus 2 would decide whether you are going uh, to uh, management, science or engineering or some other discipline. And this decision uh, is not uh, actually having any impact from your uh, earlier results prior to 10 plus 2. Okay. So, now we are going to use this example to understand some of the important concepts in uh, the CRISPR uh, biology. So, genetic uh, adaptive mechanism of CRISPR Cas follows a Markov chain model. So, here you can see there is a initial unprotected uh, state where you have a virus which is not immune to uh, you have a bacteria which is not immune to uh, certain viruses. But something happens in the due course of time, the bacteria acquires some capability and it lends up or goes through an intermediate uh, phase and due to which it acquires immunity. So, from a unprotected state here, the bacteria gains a uh, protected state. And this leads to the final bacterium state. Now, if you uh, look into its state, there are two probabilities. This is a bacteria which is unprotected. This bacteria will undergo reproduction and survive because it is not attacked by any virus, but its other partners or other uh, daughters, daughter cells were attacked by the bacteria and were killed, uh, sorry attacked by the virus and were killed. In the meantime, the bacteria acquires some weapons and it is in intermediate state. This also again would reproduce and this is not being attacked by any virus, so it survives. But some of its other daughter cells are attacked by viruses and these are killed. Soon this acquisition of the weapon uh, becomes permanent and the bacteria again reproduces and this is not yet attacked by the virus, so it survives while a population of it uh, is killed. Okay? So, which means the immunity although it has been in the stage of acquisition is not yet getting expressed properly and the organism is still being killed. But after this stage, it enters a final stage where the immunity against the invading virus becomes permanent and in this case the bacterium kills the phage. So, you can see from this stage to this stage the scenario is totally altered. Now, this bacterium final stage is dependent on the immediate state which is the T minus 1 and it is although dependent on this stage and this stage, but it is the events in this stage which decides the final outcome and this is what we call as a Markov uh, chain uh, model. So, basically the transition events for the state change uh, on individual bacterial or archaeal cell can be described and depicted as shown in this figure which we have discussed in detail. Each event in this Markov process occurs with a probability proportional to the events rate called uh, phi i. So, this is phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 and the other states phi 4 and uh, phi 5, each state depicting uh, one kind of event. Phi 4 is the event where the bacteria uh, reproduces and survives. Phi 5 is the event in which the bacterium uh, reproduces, but it is killed by the phage. And phi 3 is the stage uh, where the bacterium kills the phage, which is altogether the opposite. In the case where a cell begins in an initial state without protection against a, a particular phase, it must obtain a spacer and express it as a CRRNA. 
which we actually call as a CRISPR RNA. So, these are the things that we are going to discuss how this acquisition is being done. If this particular phase strain attacks again, the bacterium uses CRNA to interfere. At its state, there is a probability that the bacterium will reproduce or be killed by a phage. The chain of events could be broken down further to include the probability of bacterium phage interaction and the probabilities of a lytic or lysogenic phage attack. Tau i are the assumed characteristics time scales of each stage of immunity. So, we have here tau 1, tau 2 and tau 3 and uh, you can uh, remember this which we are going to use in the future uh, discussions. So, the genetic adaptive mechanisms of CRISPR-Cas9, uh, CRISPR-Cas follows the Markov chain what we have discussed and we also discussed about this tau 1, tau 2 and tau 3. Now, if you uh, look into the uh, figure on the uh, uh, right side, uh, it, this corresponds to the stage called adaptation, this corresponds to the stage called expression and this corresponds to the uh, stage called uh, interference. So, we are now trying to uh, describe this Markov chain model in, in the physical terms what goes on uh, in the bacteria's uh, adaptability against a viral attack. So, you can see here a virus attacking the bacterial cell and it is pushing inside the genetic material something called space acquisition from this target is going on. Uh, so, this DNA is being cut and uh, incorporated uh, into somewhere that place is actually basically the uh, CRISPR-Cas uh, loci and then uh, these may have been actually attacked by another virus in the past and that genetic information was also included here and now this is part of the CRISPR-Cas uh, loci. So, the bacteria keeps on accumulating all the information DNA uh, fragments uh, uh, from viruses which attacked it in the past. Now, we know that bacteria are very short lived organisms and they divide E. coli divides as fast as in 20 to 22 20 to 22 minutes. So, these uh, sequences uh, which are acquired in one single generation would actually be passed on to the next generation and that next generation would add up the new information resulting out of the viral attack. So, we know uh, from this small discussion that this is also a heritable uh, character. So, we are going to uh, discuss about that again uh, in the future. Now, there is a stage called expression where these loci is transcribed and to produce CRISPR RNA and then these CRISPR and this is called the expression stage and or the intermediate stage and then finally, uh, these will lead to uh, the interference or the where the bacterium will kill uh, the virus. Uh, so, the CRISPR locus uh, is now little bit familiar to you. Uh, this is present in about 84 percent of archaea and 45 percent of bacteria uh, according to uh, CRISPR DB. CRISPR locus uh, functions as a adaptive and heritable immune system of prokaryotes uh, against uh, invading uh, viruses. So, in our case whenever we take a vaccine uh, that uh, last our lifetime and then uh, if uh, an individual is vaccinated in a childhood uh, that immunity can go up to adolescence and with booster doses it may be uh, going a little bit uh, further. But in the case of uh, CRISPR-Cas uh, immunity in bacteria, uh, it actually passes on from uh, generation to generation uh, because uh, here the immunity is stored uh, in the form of information. Uh, in its uh, chromosome. While the immunity that we acquire uh, uh, by say vaccination uh, uh, do not go to the uh, next generation. However, of course, uh, in, in, in certain cases there is uh, mother to uh, child uh, transmission of immunity, uh, but it would not happen in the uh, male population. So, upon infection of a virus, the viral DNA is acquired and integrated into the CRISPR sequence as we have shown in the figure earlier. Uh, Fusion infections would lead to targeted cleavage of the invading viral DNA having similarity to integrated species sequence of uh, CRISPR. 
Now you can see this in simple terms the Cas CRISPR Cas loci where you have the Cas genes and you have the uh, CRISPR array. Now these are all uh, interspaced by phase derived uh, spaces, uh, the, the colored uh, angles and these are the uh, dark ones are the repeats. Let us see uh, a little bit closer how this uh, system works. So uh, once a virus uh, attacks a bacterial cell and it uh, injects uh, the DNA inside the bacterial cell there is a system inside the bacteria, uh, the CRISPR um, uh, Cas loci uh, as we already know. They produces uh, a complex called Cas1 uh, Cas2 complex. This Cas1 Cas2 complex will go and cleave a selected portion of these viral DNA and insert it into the existing uh, CRISPR array. So, with each infection uh, the length of this array keeps on increasing. So, uh, this CRISPR uh, array is also kind of a uh, scoreboard or scorecard where we can know how many times this particular bacterial strain uh, has been infected by virus in the past. The CRISPR Cas system uh, can be categorized into two classes based on the structure and function of Cas protein. Uh, which are further subdivided into uh, 6 types. So, class 1 includes type 1, 3 and 4, class 2 includes type uh, 2, 5 and 6. Type 1, 2 and 5 systems recognize and cleave DNA, type 4 can edit RNA and type 3 edits both RNA uh, and DNA. As we have already shown that uh, class 1, class 2 system uh, selects the uh, fragment of DNA uh, to be incorporated into the uh, CRISPR Cas uh, loci and today we know that all known CRISPR Cas systems contain these uh, two proteins Cas1 and Cas2. The three different types 1, 2 and 3 are each characterized by unique Cas proteins involved in maturation of the CRISPR RNAs, targeting of foreign uh, nucleic acid and nucleic acid cleavage. The type 2 CRISPR Cas system is defined by the presence of a large 1000 to 1600 amino acid uh, endonuclease called as uh, Cas9. Let us look into the role of Cas1 and Cas2 uh, in protospecer DNA acquisition by the host CRISPR array uh, for the uh, CRISPR Cas uh, adaptive immunity. So, acquisition of the enemy DNA, uh, which is basically uh, the viral DNA, happens in four steps. The first step is the protospecer binding and selection. Second step is the 3 prime overhang cleavage as you can see here uh, in this figure. The third is the integration and the fourth is the DNA uh, synthesis and uh, repair. In the integration step, uh, palm C uh, sequences in C prime OH, uh, the cleavage at site 1 of Cas1, Cas2 is integrated into the spacer side of uh, repeat 1 in the CRISPR array uh, likely via the uh, second nucleophilic attack. Whereas the non uh, palm C cleavage at site 2 is integrated into the leader side of repeat 1 uh, likely via the first uh, nucleophilic attack. Let us look into the crystal structure of uh, these uh, Cas1, Cas2 bound to dual forked uh, protospacer DNA from uh, E. coli. So, you can see here uh, Cas1 A, Cas1 uh, A prime, this is Cas1 A and this is uh, Cas1 A prime. Uh, similarly, you have Cas2 and uh, Cas2 prime. Then you have uh, Cas1 B and Cas1 uh, B prime. And they are shown in their respective colors uh, to make them distinct from uh, each other. The two active sites 1 and 2 are shown with uh, black uh, circles. You can see here a black circle, maybe not uh, visible clearly, but within this circle if you look into you can see a black circle over here which has become red now due to my uh, coloring. So, these are the active sites 1 and 2. 
In the crystal structure, both sides are bound with palm C, uh, uh, CTT. The palm C recognition via hydrogen bonding and amino acid side chain stacking in the binding pocket are indicated in uh, black and gray uh, dotted lines uh, respectively. Uh, here you can see the hydrogen bonding and the side chain uh, stacking. Type 2 crispr cas system are further characterized by the requirement for a unique accessory RNA. The trans activating CRISPR RNA or the tracer RNA as well as RNAs 3 for maturation of CRISPR RNAs. Castase is involved as a scaffold for maturation of CRISPR RNAs and is required for cleavage of the double stranded DNA target. So, you can see here the uh, various uh, genes in these uh, particular uh, loci. Let us look into the class 1 and class 2 uh, CRISPR system a little bit uh, closely. What are the key features and uh, the modularity of their organization? So, you can see here in uh, figure A the general architectures of class 1 uh, which is having multi protein effector uh, complexes and class 2 which is having single protein effector complexes. Here the genes are shown as arrows, uh, homologous genes are shown by the same color, uh, genes uh, names follow the current uh, nomenclature and uh, classification and here you are the uh, CRISPR uh, repeats uh, and here are the uh, spacers. So, spacers and repeats you already know in uh, detail and these are the associated uh, genes, CRISPR associated genes and you can see here in class 1. Cas1 and Cas2 are present in both, in fact in all uh, CRISPR-Cas system as we have already discussed. But you will see that besides these two uh, conserved, highly conserved genes in all the systems, uh, there is variation in the other uh, Cas genes. Uh, as already told to you, Cas2 has only a single effector protein which may be uh, Cas9, Cas12 or Cas13. Whereas, in type 2 you have so many uh, Cas 3, Cas 8, 10, 8 or 10, uh, 11, 7, 5, 6 and uh, so on. So, uh, this is very in important uh, for our future understanding of the CRISPR Cas system in uh, bacteria. So, what are the principal building blocks of uh, CRISPR Cas uh, system uh, uh, which constitute the diverse types? So, here you will see the class 1. Uh, which we uh, described earlier in class 2 and the types under these classes uh, respective uh, classes. And you can see here the various modules uh, uh, used for adaptation and expression and interference and also some modules associated with the uh, signal transduction and others are having certain ancillary uh, sequences. Uh, which may having some helping role or some kind of unknown uh, roles. So, we already spoke about this uh, for example, this is having type 2 has having Cas9 and then 5 is having Cas12 Cas and Cas13 uh, and in all of these you can see Cas1 and Cas2 are invariably present. In Cas, um, uh, um, in type 2, CRISPR Cas9 system, you also have a uh, protein called RNS3 and then you have uh, CSN2. So, we have to remember uh, these uh, proteins uh, in future while discussing the CRISPR Cas9 uh, system. So, this is a tabulated form uh, uh, about the differences between the various types of CRISPR Cas uh, system and you can see here uh, the type. Uh, and you can see here uh, the signature uh, protein against each type. Uh, you have type 2 Cas9 very famous uh, uh, protein and then in type 3 you have CSM, uh, CMR. In type 1 you have uh, cascade, we will uh, have a little bit of discussion about uh, what is uh, uh, cascade. Then uh, you have uh, the various uh, 
cleavage products uh, here you have single strand uh, SSBs and you have DSBs and so on. Now let us look into the uh, expression of these uh, CRISPR Cas uh, loci. Now uh, let us look into the expression of the uh, CRISPR Cas uh, loci. So we know about these uh, CRISPR loci, CRISPR Cas loci now. So these uh, loci or uh, uh, genes get uh, transcribed uh, into a pre CRISPR RNA. So here you have all the repeats and all the spacers expressed as a uh, single uh, transcript. And you have to remember that these are basically the sequences of the viruses which attack these bacterial strain uh, in the historical uh, past. Also, they are basically antecedent uh, DNA. So, once these uh, transcription uh, happens and the formation of the uh, pre CRISPR uh, RNA happens. Now, depending on the class of the CRISPR Cas system, which we just discussed prior to this slide, and the type, uh, the processing would be different. Okay. So, this is the diversity and variation uh, in this uh, processing. So, you can see here in under class 1, we have type 1 and type 3 under class 2, type 2 and type 4. So, these pre CRISPR RNA is handled in different ways by different proteins in these different class and different types. So, for example, in this class 1 type, uh, you have the role of Cas6 or Cas5D uh, or Cascade here. Here, Cas6 plays a role and it involves the CSM or uh, CMR uh, complex and in type 2 you have class 2 type 2 you have uh, tracer RNA, RNAs 3 and uh, Cas9 and uh, here you have the uh, CPF1 and then the interference mechanism will also be uh, different. We will be discussing some of these in detail in the uh, next uh, slides. So, as I already told you, you here in this uh, description of the figure, this pre CRISPR RNA is further processed by Cas6 in type 1 and 3 systems. In type 2 CRISPR Cas system, CRISPR RNA maceration requires this uh, tracer RNA, RNAs3 and Cas10, whereas in type uh, 5A system, CPF uh, is uh, alone enough for CRISPR RNA uh, maceration. In the interference state of uh, type 1 systems, cascade, uh, which is basically CRISPR associated complex for antiviral defense, is guided by CRISPR RNA to bind the foreign DNA in a sequence specific manner and subsequently recruits Cas3 that degrades the displaced strand through its 3 prime to 5 prime exonucleotic uh, activity. So, here the type 3 a and type 3 B CRISPR Cas system employs CSM and CMR complexes respectively for cleavage of DNA and its uh, transcripts here uh, shown by the black and uh, red uh, triangles. And uh, class 2 a ribonucleoprotein complex consisting of Cas9 and a tracer RNA CRISPR RNA duplex targets the cleavage invading DNA in type 2 CRISPR, uh, CRISPR Cas system. And while in 5, the CRISPR RNA guided effector protein CPF1 is responsible for target degradation, uh, and the red triangles here uh, represents the cleavage sites of the interference uh, machinery. So, you can see these uh, sites are uh, all uh, in, in different locations depending on the class and type. Type 1 and type 2 systems uh, use SOR 3 to 7 base pair. Uh, protospacer adjacent motifs or PAMs for identification of suitable protospacer for uh, acquisition. During naive adaptation by type 2 systems, PAM is recognized by Cas9 while in type 1 E systems, Cas1 and Cas2 are sufficient for recognition of PAM. Following the protospacer selection, 
The acquisition machinery performs site specific integration of the new spacer into the CRISPR array at the leader end concurrent with duplication of the first repeat. Uh, it has been shown that uh, both the leader sequence and the first repeat are essential for this uh, process. Studies of the E. coli type 1 E and uh, S. thermophilus type 2 A systems reveal that the leader repeat boundary serves as an anchor for spacer integration. We will be discussing this uh, soon. Now, let us look into the arrangement of the uh, various uh, components uh, in, in, in the CRISPR-Cas immunity system in type 2 A CRISPR-Cas immunity system in particular. So, you have a uh, CRISPR array over here and then uh, uh, this is the existing CRISPR array. Okay? Uh, so, this is uh, basically the tau 1 uh, state or yes uh, uh, and the initial state. Okay? Now, uh, if the virus is attacked by uh, sorry, if the bacteria is attacked by a new virus, uh, in the presence of Cas1, Cas2, Cas9, uh, CSN2, a new spacer is acquired. Okay? So, these viral DNA uh, having this particular color code is added here. So, this is the tau tree uh, state. So, here you can see this uh, up to the yellow, uh, this is uh, it up, to, up to this point, it is same. So, new one is added over here. So, this is just uh, schematics, uh, it does not happen that straight away. Uh, we will discuss how it exactly happens. This is just to make uh, the simple uh, conceptual uh, presentation that uh, the viral DNA is added to the existing CRISPR array with the help of the Cas1, Cas2, Cas9 and uh, CRN, uh, CSN2 uh, um, proteins. And uh, these uh, Cas1, Cas2, CSN2 uh, DNA spacer capture complex. So, uh, these uh, complex uh, will leaving aside the Cas9, uh, these complex will bind to this viral DNA. So, you can see here uh, this is the viral DNA having the uh, similar color code and uh, these are the 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, Cas1 dimers and then you have 2 uh, Cas2 dimers and you have 2 CSN2 uh, tetramers. So, uh, this is a 90 degree rotation uh, and, and uh, a different view of this uh, same structure where these Cas1, Cas2, CSN2 uh, forms a complex with the viral DNA to cleave it and uh, to cut it uh, from the viral DNA and paste it into the uh, CRISPR array, um, uh, existing CRISPR array. So, you can see here uh, roughly around 30 base pair of uh, DSDNA. Uh, this is protected within this uh, complex and this will be pasted into the existing CRISPR array. And if you remember the work of uh, Isino and Mojica and they spoke, uh, spoke about something around 35 um, base pair length um, spacers or repeats. Okay. So, uh, in addition to the Cas1, Cas2, uh, Cas9 type 2, a CRISPR Cas system also include this CSN2 uh, which is considered a subtype specific signature Cas protein. CSN2 has been implicated in the adaptation stage of CRISPR mediated immunity since was shown to be required for the acquisition of new spacers during in vivo adaptation experiments. Uh, when S pyrosines type 2A Cas operand was expressed in E. coli, four Cas proteins were uh, core purified, suggesting the formation of a multiprotein uh, Cas complex. So, these are the experimental evidences which uh, led to the you know uh, suggestion of these kind of uh, structures uh, occurring. How does the interaction between Cas1, Cas2 and CSN two proteins uh, occur exactly uh, within this uh, complex. So, we spoke about uh, these uh, 4 Cas1, uh, 2 uh, into Cas2, 2 into uh, CSN2 and uh, you can see here this is a Cas1 dimer here, this is a Cas uh, again here CSN2 head and this is a Cas2 uh, dimer over here and uh, this is as the 90 degree rotation uh, to show 
the underside uh, of this uh, particular uh, complex and these are uh, in uh, more details the structure of these uh, particular uh, complex. So, this is a more detailed view uh, of the top of the complex uh, here right. So, in the Kasson dimer interf interacts specifically with just the CSN 2B promoter of each CSN 2 head domain. This model is shown as a cartoon in the repetitive interacting chains outlined by a transparent molecular uh, surface filtered to uh, 20 angstrom uh, resolution. Now, uh, this is an overlay of the EF cast 1 dimer and cast 2 terminus from the spacer bound crystal structure with a cast 1 dimer from the uh, monomer complex. Both the asymmetry of the cast 1 C terminal domains and the uh, uh, interacting uh, interaction between the C terminal strand of cast 2 and the cast 1 uh, cast 1 B and terminal domains are uh, conserved over here. Uh, this is a close up of the cast 1 uh, CSN 2. Uh, interface. Uh, different residues on a single CSN2 protein interact with the symmetrical surfaces of the Cas1 and terminal uh, domains. Now, uh, this is a proper scheme for spacer acquisitions. Now, we know that these uh, Cas1, Cas2 CSN uh, complex uh, binds uh, to the viral DNA, uh, but how do uh, these acquisition uh, really takes place? So, this is a proposed scheme as presented over here. So, you have this uh, viral DNA fragment which has a palm site okay, uh, which precedes uh, the uh, potential uh, proto, uh, proto spacer. Now, these uh, Cas1, uh, Cas2 CSN uh, complex uh, engages on the free uh, DNA end uh, sites and uh, while the castine uh, CR tracer RNA uh, would uh, bind to the uh, pump site. So, CSN2 protein has uh, high DNA affinity and affinity, it binds to the DNA ends as a resu result of which this Cas1, Cas2 CSN complex would engage free DNA ends in the cells and encircle DNA within the complex. This Cas CSN complex would then slide on the DNA upon binding, uh, it goes towards the Castine complex uh, and it will keep on moving uh, until it encounters, encounters a castine protein that is bound to a palm uh, sequence. At that point, the DNA uh, could be cleaved by an as yet identified uh, cellular nucleus releasing Cas9 and the uh, uh, Cas1, uh, 2 CSN complex encapsulating a 30 base pair DNA fragment as you can see in the figure. And uh, as a new spacer ready for integration. So, this cleaving is uh, or, or picking up of the uh, viral DNA uh, is complete at this stage. Integration of the spacer would uh, require uh, dissociation of the complex to release the uh, Cas1, Cas2 complex in the conformation uh, compatible with spacer integration. The unknown, uh, the process is much more complicated than uh, as currently understood and work is going on to elucidate uh, the details of how DNA is captured in these structures and how it is incorporated into the CRISPR arrays. A lot of details already known, but, uh, but certain information are, 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 are missing. So, this uh, it still remains, uh, many of these things still remains uh, uh, unknown uh, in, in certain aspects. So, let us look into the structure of the uh, Cas9 protein. Uh, for example, we are looking into the structure of the streptococcus pyrogenes. And this contains uh, about uh, seven domains with uh, some uh, basically are subdomains. So, you have these uh, REC1, uh, REC2 and uh, REC3. Then you have a bridge over here, uh, which is a bridge helix. Then you have uh, RAVC and RAVC may actually be distributed uh, into three, uh, RAV1, 2 and 3. Okay. Then there is a palm interacting uh, domain and we know about this uh, palm uh, sequence now and uh, these are overall uh, the domains of uh, castine protein which we have already uh, discussed and uh, in, in three dimensional space they are arranged uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in this uh, special uh, distribution and this is the uh, linear uh, 
genetic uh, gene uh, sequence uh, uh, arrangement, but when it is expressed into a protein, uh, it will fold in three dimensional space and then you find the various domains in three dimensional space uh, in, in, in some uh, structure uh, simplified like this. Okay. Now, let us look into the structure of a Cas9 which we have uh, seen here uh, when it is complex to a single guide RNA okay, and, and a uh, target uh, DNA. Uh, each uh, protein domain is uh, colored here uh, according to the domain organization uh, diagram uh, below these uh, uh, structures. The REC1 domain is the largest and it is responsible for binding the guide RNA. The role of the REC2 domain is uh, not understood uh, uh, currently. The arginine rich uh, bridge helix is crucial for initiating uh, cleavage activity upon binding of uh, target DNA. The palm interacting domain confers uh, palm specificity and is therefore responsible for initiating binding to target DNA. The HNH and RAVC domains are nucleus domains that cut the single stranded uh, DNA. So, with these we complete uh, the understanding of the structure of these uh, very important uh, protein. Thank you for your patient hearing. In the next lectures, we look into the various stages uh, by which the CRISPR-Cas immunity system matures. Thank you.